Lauren, to me, I, ha I have to go back to the beginning. Lauren was, was born the 10 month of the year, 10 pounds, 10 ounces. And when I held her in my hands, she was a, a perfect 10 to me. And to this day, she still is. She was our oldest daughter, but she had two older brothers that she was always playing and trying to keep up with. I always wanted to be able to play with them at a young age, but it took a process and it was a grind to be able to prove that I could be able to play with them. And finally, one day when, when her cousins all came over, there, there was an odd number of players and they picked her to come out and, and play as well. And she had her opportunity to get on the court. Scoring is, is um, you know, it's flashy. It's, it's what you want growing up. It's, it's what most players want throughout their entire career. And, uh, you know, she was able to find a spot in those games by rebounding. And it meant a lot to her to be out there and to play and to prove herself as a player and as an athlete. I committed to the University of Idaho um, during my junior year of high school. And um, at the time, I was super excited and, uh, you know, looking forward to be able to go play college basketball. And so it was just stress free. And I was able to, you know, enjoy my last years of high school just playing for a state championship. We moved to Arizona. She was a junior and she won state in Arizona, their team. We moved back to Utah as a senior and then they won state. So I think that's a pretty cool accomplishment for her to be able to win state in two states. Who can say that, right? After I had graduated, I had the whole summer to, you know, work and get ready for college basketball, which I was really excited about. I was super excited to be able to start a new chapter in my life and to be able to finally play college basketball. And she got up there. We, we dropped her off the beginning of August. About four or five weeks into it, I could tell she was really not happy. She was struggling. I lost a lot of love for the game of basketball. I was, you know, dreading practice. I was dreading weights. I was dreading everything that had to do with basketball itself, which was hard for me because I had loved playing the game, you know, my whole life. When you're struggling mentally, it overflows into everything. So her studies were struggling. She was frustrated and she was really wondering and doubting whether or not she had made the right choice. So it was really weird and off to not be able to feel that passion and that drive for it anymore. And I was trying to find, you know, at that point, really any way to be done playing the game. I remember looking at a text from Lauren and, and it said, I'm, I'm coming home. You know, that, it took me by surprise a little bit. You know, I said, are you sure? And, you know, and I knew there'd been challenges there. And, uh, you know, I'm like, all these emotions are running through. You know, you've made this commitment. Um, you know, you, you, you need to stay. And, you know, it's not about what me as a father thinks. It's her and her mental health and her aspect of it and, and her perception of it. And so I just sent back a text and said, as long as you have a plan, I'm on board. I definitely doubted myself after, you know, leaving the D1 program because I didn't know if I was just strong enough to be able to play Division One. I. I ended up going to Salt Lake Community College. While I was at Slick, I think it was very eye-opening and I was able to be able to step back and breathe for a second and kind of figure out who I was again. You know, as they say, a stone becomes a gem through much pressure. And I saw the pressure that was on her and it started to refine her with those sharp edges, so to say, maybe. It really was a blessing in a sense how this all came together at that point in her life. As soon as I actually was at Slick, before our first game, uh, BYU called me up and um, offered me a scholarship. And just being able to hear that from a school so quickly, you know, before I had even played a game was good for my mental health and my confidence in general. These little miracles started to occur. They were answers to prayers, her prayers, and our prayers as well. And we could see the Lord's hand in this work. When Lauren got to BYU, she had to sit out a year um, because of the, the NCAA rules with, with transfers. So those years of having to sit out and watch her brothers compete until she finally had an opportunity to get out and play was similar to when she came to BYU and had to sit out for a year and wait for her opportunity to earn it. It really takes a certain mindset to be able to sit out a whole year and stay in shape, keep your eyes on the prize, and, and be able to um, put yourself in a position throughout that year and you can have success the following year. Kind of like the phoenix rising up from the ashes, she 
she was back. What I'm most proud of with Lauren is her persistence. She's gone through some trials, as we all do, as athletes do, and she's worked hard. A big part of Lauren having so much success with, with rebounding at the highest level and doing the dirty work is because she started from a very young age and she found success at it and she found value in it and she stuck with it all the way till now, all these years later. My journey through basketball was different, but I think that that was all part of God's plan and his timing because, you know, if I didn't go to University of Idaho and then Slick, I don't think that I would be the same player that I am today. It's all part of your plan and it's all part of the journey.